The EU's Common Security and Defence Policy, or CSDP, is a topic of Chapter 7 of our book. Security and defence were for a very long time a taboo in European integration. Member States saw NATO or national defence policies as the backbone of their territorial defence, and particularly the United States provided for many countries the ultimate security guarantee. And this implied that the EU and its predecessors had no role to play and were even explicitly excluded. This changed to some extent in the late 1990s and early 2000s, following the wars in the Western Balkans, which led to a shift in the position of the main member states and of the United States. And this resulted in two balancing acts. First of all, between the European and the more Atlantic-oriented member states, and particularly between France and the United Kingdom. And the main issue was that the EU could develop a security and defence policy on condition that this would not undermine NATO. And the second balancing act was between EU member states that were a member of NATO and those that had a neutral status. And the main point was here that the EU should not only develop a military but also civilian crisis management tools. And the result of this dual balancing act is that the EU member states agreed to establish and develop the common security and defence policy. However, the label common security and defence policy was again problematic, just like it was the case with the CFSP, as we discussed in the previous video. And again, it resulted in an expectation capabilities gap. The name CSDP is problematic because of two reasons. First, it is not that common. And second, it is not at all about defence. First, the CSDP is not common, but purely intergovernmental. Decision-making takes place in the Council, where unanimity applies. And, importantly, there is no such thing as an EU army. There are no EU forces, neither military nor civilian. Instead, the CSDP is based on voluntary contributions from member states. And secondly, the EU's common security and defence policy is in fact not at all about defence. And surely not about territorial defence. Even more, the Treaty on European Union emphasizes, and I quote, that national security remains the sole responsibility of each member state, and that CSDP shall not prejudice the specific character of the security and defense policy of certain member states, including their obligations in NATO. So it was clear from the start that CSDP was not at all made for being used in high intensive, let alone offensive military operations as this was reserved for NATO or for ad hoc military coalitions. But what is CSDP then about? CSDP gives the EU the possibility to conduct military and civilian crisis management operations, including rule of law missions, security sector reform missions and border assistance missions. Since its creation, the EU has conducted approximately 15 military operations and 20 civilian missions. Examples of military operations were the anti-piracy naval operations in the Horn of Africa and the military training missions in several African countries. Examples of civilian missions were the large rule of law mission EU-LEX in Kosovo or the security sector reform mission in Ukraine. The CSDP thus has the potential to be an additional toolbox which the EU can use in its foreign policy and which can increase the credibility of the EU as a diplomatic actor. However, CSDP has been, a, has been used less frequently than expected because it is not that evident to mobilize resources, forces and equipment and to convince member states to contribute. And many operations also prove to be ineffective or simply insufficient in the view of the security challenges at hand, with CFSP operations in the Sahel region being a case in point. And remarkably, the most interesting developments regarding security and defence are not to be found in the context of CSDP operations or missions, but rather in the field of military, security and aviation-related technologies and industries which also fits within the EU's aim to strengthen its strategic autonomy. And this is the paradox. CSDP is purely intergovernmental, but to strengthen the industrial and technological basis of European defence, the active involvement of the EU's internal policies of the community method and of the European Commission is needed and is also accepted by the Member States. 
and we can see several evolutions in this direction. New legislative frameworks have been developed, larger budgets have been assigned to security-related research and development, defense-related industries are gradually included and partially included in the EU's internal market, and within the European Commission, a new Directorate General has been created with the title Defense Industry and Space. What is the impact of the Russian invasion in Ukraine? On the one hand, it meant a boost for existing initiatives, including training missions for Ukrainian troops, or the acceleration of initiatives in terms of the military-industrial basis of CFSP and aiming for more strategic autonomy, and the use of the European Peace Facility to finance the provision of weapons to Ukraine. But on the other hand, in terms of hard military power, the member states, NATO and two non-EU countries, the US and the, and the UK, proved to be key players. The Russian invasion in Ukraine also resulted in some power shifts within the European Union in the field of CSDP, with the Baltic countries and the Central European countries gaining more importance in policymaking, just like the European Commission with regard to the military-industrial component.